Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna take a close look at this 2023 Toyota Camry SE. This is not just any SE Camry. This one is the Nightshade Edition. There aren't many of these around, and I'm gonna point out to you what makes it the Nightshade Edition. I love the wheels in this thing. I also love the peppy little four-cylinder engine. It's the four-cylinder that could. One of the nice things about this vehicle is that you can get it in all kinds of configurations. You can get it in front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, hybrid, non-hybrid four-cylinder, and non-hybrid V6. Let's jump right in and take a look at this 2023 Toyota Camry four-cylinder front-wheel drive nightshade. But before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this beautiful 2023 Toyota Camry. I'll be sure to leave all of Impex Auto Sales contact information, including their website, in the description box below. One of the things that stands out to me about this Camry body style is the angles on it. There are all kinds of angles see that line there running down you've got a line there that runs all the way down the body it's a real angular especially on the hood and then all the angles that come up to meet at a point by the the emblem the toyota emblem that looks so good super sporty um, again as i mentioned in the intro the wheels on this thing are absolutely fantastic the fact that this is a nightshade gives it these bronze looking wheels those are out, obviously from the factory. Super good looking. Lower profile tires. This one's sitting on Michelins. I love the fact that uh, Toyota put Michelins on this thing. It has vented brakes up front. Another part of the nightshade package is the black mirrors. And uh, this, this looks super good. You also have an LED light right here in the mirror. You also have um, piano black body molding here that goes all the way up, all the way around to the bottom surrounding the windows looks super good you also have black what looks like a trd mask uh, up front i love that grill um, you do have these really big blackout sections here and i know why toyota did that just to break up the monotony of this huge white panel or body colored panel but I really do wish they would have put a fog light here. Something, maybe just a strip across, something there that would, you know, make it serve as a function. Um, or maybe some type of uh, passage for cooling the brakes, since this is an SE. Uh, but that's something that Toyota and even Lexus do on their kind of sporty models, um, is, is they don't put fog lights on them. I don't understand that. You, you still want to drive sporty even when it's foggy outside sometimes, I think. I don't know. Another nightshade part, black fin, black spoiler, black badging. Looks so good. Then you have your SE badge right there, sporty edition Camry, and you have your uh, fins underneath. Those are pretty much just for look. Here's our key fob for the Camry. You can take a look on the very top. You have lock, unlock, hold, and hold. This is for the trunk. This is for the panic alarm. You can see two little buttons there. You can uh, feel in your pocket to locate where the unlock or the lock button is, and you don't even have to take it out of your pocket if you want to lock the doors. On the back side, piano black, Camry, nice little look. Then you also have a little tab right here on the opposite side or on the end of the key fob. You can push that down, pull this out, and there is a key right there. This key will never be used to start the vehicle. It's only used to get you into that lock right there in the event that the key fob battery dies, at which point you'll need to have that replaced. You can see here, actually, here's a little tidbit for you. You can see right there is a place where you'll actually insert this key. You'll push that in there, turn it, it pops open, and there's a key fob battery inside there. You'll just replace that. You can get that at any major retailer really easy but that is your key fob now whenever you approach the vehicle you can just touch the door handle and the door will unlock that works for locking and unlocking let's take a quick look at that i have the key fob on my person you can see that there are little dimples right there on the door handle that locks the doors the lights flash doors are now locked then as long again as long as i have the key fob on me i can just touch the door handle and the door unlocks for me. Coming around to the trunk, there's also a rubber button on the right side, far right, 
you'll locate the Y in Camry and move to the right of that. You'll push the rubber button in and hold it and it pops the trunk for you. So here's your trunk. You can see here all the way over to the end. Man, it's almost like there's not any space for the fender to be there. You can see how deep that is. That's actually super nice. So you can get something super long all the way across right there in the very back. Then you'll actually see a split right there. That's because these two rear seats fold down via this lever. So you just pull that and then you'll go inside the vehicle in the back and you'll fold these seats down and that gives you a big, big trunk pass through, making it really convenient to carry big items. Then you have this here. This is your tire changing equipment. All I did was lift it up this panel and there you go. There's your jack and everything that you would need to change a tire. And then you have a spare tire underneath this uh, foam board right there that's holding all your tire changing equipment. Here is your backup camera. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. There's also a keyhole right there in the event that the key battery is dead. That's where you can plug in that auxiliary key I showed you right there to pop open the trunk. Nice and easy. I love how sporty and athletic that, that rear looks. Uh, you can see where it, it kind of comes over the the wheel arches right there. That's a cool look. I like how the rear tail lights literally wrap around from almost the middle of the back all the way up to about halfway in that quarter panel. That's a pretty cool look. You have this embellishment here. It's not functional really. It's just decoration pretty much, but it looks pretty cool. Now let's take a look at the heart of the beast. This is the little four cylinder that could it's only got like 203 horsepower, but it's nice and peppy. It gets the job done. We'll take a look uh, at what it feels like in the driving portion, but just for what we're taking a look at now, this is what makes it go. Right here's your oil stick. Right here's your oil fill. Coolant, windshield washer fluid, brake fluid, battery, positive and negative. And uh, here's your sign that if you, this is not the place to get a manicure. So do not stick your hand down in there in that fan. And also the fan cannot tie your ties for you. So if you're wearing a suit and tie, you might wanna take your tie off before you begin to do things in the engine. Otherwise, you can trap your tie. That's not good. So there's the engine. My seat is adjusted for me. I'm going to show you what it looks like if you're over six feet tall and you have to get in the back seat. Nice and comfy there. It's actually pretty easy. It looks like some thought went into this. I mean, it, it my, my knees touched right there, but you know, that's not a big deal. So here's how I'm regularly, regularly sitting. You can see the front there. That's not too shabby. The uh, back seats, just like the front seats, have this ribbed texture about them. That's pretty cool. Nice and sporty looking. Firm, but not, you know, uncomfortable. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a pretty good feel. And again, this is the SE uh, configuration, so it has this look about it. You do have child safety seat anchors here. And I love how those these, these are actually into the body, so you can put a... Uh, child safety seat right there and then uh, that's your latch safety system continuation of that you can see up there on the back deck the latch safety system so technically you can get three child safety seats back here if you really wanted to right here is a uh, armrest with cup holders kind of nice this back is really really basic not much going on back here just a little bit of a storage cubby right there function I guess uh, so, but the, the point of this was to get back here and to see what the back seat is like. It's nice. You have a nice little trim piece right here along the mid section of the door in the back. Speaker, power windows. I like what the back door sounds like when it closes. It's actually pretty impressive. I want to show you what that sounds like from the outside. You know, I'm a weirdo and I, I have a thing about this. That has got such a good sound to it. I really like that sound. Let's see what the front door. Front door doesn't sound as good as the back door, but uh, 
that's that's that so that's your back seat room and the front seat matches the back see the door trim piece power door stuff lock unlock mirror controls speaker cubby fit a water bottle down in there power seats uh, for the driver I think the passenger is manual on this one uh, then you have that matching trim look they're nice and sporty pretty good looking this this front seat is comfortable I've only driven it a, a little bit I've had it the weekend I don't know how comfortable this seat is going to be in a long trip um, because I was trying to think about that and the seat is firm it's supportive but I, I just don't know about a long trip uh, I could see where it would be kind of testy for you right here on the left side this is going to be in front of your left knee when you're sitting in the driver's seat that is for the gas gas tank trunk traction control off automatic high beams one of the things that I really enjoy about a Toyota Camry is the fact that the interior is consistently easy to use it's simple but it looks nice especially on the SE edition it's sporty I like the black inside I like the stitching I'll show you all that but one of the things that I want to draw your attention to first is the climate system this sounds kind of silly but you'll see when I show you check this out the climate system in the Camry is right there in front of the gear shifter you see that and it doesn't have a whole bunch of unnecessary buttons that don't need to be there you have climate here and that is it and I really appreciate that uh, Toyota is not trying to integrate audio buttons and climate buttons in one section of the dash Toyota is leaving all of that audio and accessories and everything up here on your touchscreen and also on the menu buttons on the side of the touchscreen dedicated climate I really like that it also makes it so that the passenger can use it as easily as the driver you have dual zone climate control I have it on auto so it's automatically going to keep the cabin temperature at 72 right now as long as auto is activated and I have sync activated so that it's going to keep the whole cabin at 72 degrees at any point the passenger can reach over adjust their own temperature if they want to we're adjusting it up it takes it out of sync because the passenger now wants a different temperature than the driver if I press sync again it matches them back up nice and easy front defrost and this is rear defrost and also side mirror defrost super simple fans off adjust the fan speed up or down manually adjust the fan direction foot face foot face also uh, defrost AC and then recirculate super easy well done Toyota flashers emergency flashers right there really nice and then right here down in front of the shifter you have a power point and then you also have a, a place for USB charging of your device right here there's just a cubby I would love to see wireless charging right here but it's not there that's just what it is that should be standard in all cars in my opinion so should heated seats I don't understand why heated seats are not here it would be so easy to just put the little buttons right there why no heated seats in a $31,000 car I just don't get it then you have a strip right here it runs all the way up that's a pretty cool touch that's that's actually kind of nice and then it meets down with the strip that comes all the way down there stitching as I mentioned a um, little bit of, of soft touch material here not not too soft but a little bit uh, and then over here on the steering wheel you have your controls for your audio system uh, voice commands volume this is going to uh, control the multi information display right there in between your tech and your speedometer there and then this is going to be cruise control and a whole bunch of safety features this is going to be audio as well another thing that I like about the way Toyota has set up their steering wheel is that on the bottom is all audio and voice you see that left and right and then right here is cruise control a couple of safety features and then uh, basic information as far as like multi information display right there in the center of the dash here's your windshield wiper stock this is also going to be your turn signals it has a three blink lane change option you can just press it without fully engaging it oops I fully engaged it watch this 
and that's nice. That way you don't have to actually fully engage your um, turn signal. This is fully engaged when you click it all the way down and it stays. But that's pretty cool. Then you also have automatic headlights. So you can do that, place it there, and they'll cut on automatically as the sun goes down. That's a nice feature. Here's high beams, low beams. But if you have your automatic high beams activated, they will cut on your high beams and you can use them all the time if you wish. I really like that feature. Here's your wiper stalk, very easy. Mist, off, intermittent, low and high, intermittent speed, and then you pull this whole stalk toward you to wash the windshield off, nice and easy. Tachometer on the left, multi-information display, speedometer on the right. Okay, let's take a quick look at this multi-information display. You can see, okay, up, down, left, and right. And that is all going to control that display right there in between the tack and the speedometer. I'm gonna press down. And what that is going to do is it's gonna show me my options that I can select from. I'm gonna zoom in on it now, but you can just know that I'm gonna be operating with this keypad Let's zoom in so we can take a detailed look. I press right, and you can see at the top of that display, there's information, driving, no messages, settings, and then it goes right back. I'm gonna press down now. So this is basic trip information, average miles per gallon, average speed, all those things. Distance to empty, eco indicator. I can actually uh, have that active and it will be a visual indicator as to how efficiently or inefficiently I'm driving. I actually like that feature. And then there is a digital speedometer right there. That's really nice. Real time, uh, tire pressure, and then back to the main screen, okay? On the right side, this is gonna be radar cruise control and things like that. Radar cruise control is going to be, well, this is my cruise control here on the right side. And then this is going to be the distance that is maintained between the vehicle, uh, my vehicle and the one in front of me. And then this is going to be uh, LTA lane trace assist or lane centering as well. So when I get to my speed that I wanna cruise at, this, this button actually activates the cruise control right there on the right side, see that round? So I can press that in and it says radar ready up there. At that point, I can then press this button and it will set the distance that I want for the vehicle to maintain between me and the vehicle in front of me once the cruise control is activated. That's the largest distance it's gonna maintain medium and the least amount of distance. So that's gonna be closer to the vehicle in front of you. Now it will automatically brake if, if you get too close to a vehicle and you're not braking, it will brake uh, so that you don't obviously hit somebody in front of you. And then LTA, Lane Trace Assist, the button directly below that is going to see the lines on the road and it's going to help maintain your center in that lane. You can actually feel the steering wheel nudging you left and right a little bit while you're driving. Uh, it's, it's not too obtrusive though, I, I really like that feature. So I'm gonna go back to OK in the middle of that. So right there are uh, settings that we just covered no emergency messages, and then this is settings. And by the way, in this menu, whenever I highlight any of these uh, features, it's how I can make adjustments to that feature according to how I want it to operate. Pre-collision system, you don't ever wanna test that. Uh, Pre-collision system, as the name implies, is the feature that will actually break and, and it's only used in the event that an impact is imminent. DRCC is dynamic radar cruise control. Some vehicles actually have DRCC or full speed range cruise control to where it can work all the way down basically to zero or super, super low speeds. But DRCC allows the vehicle to speed up uh, up to a certain preset speed without you having to interact with the accelerator 
based on the speed it's set at. This is a great feature and, and I would recommend if you're not familiar with this feature to just use it sparingly until you get used to it. BSM is blind spot monitor. That's the lights in the rear view mirrors that light up whenever someone's in your blind spot so you know not to change lanes if that light is illuminated. RCTA is rear cross traffic alert. Very, very nice feature. I've actually used that while I've had this vehicle. It's really, really helpful in uh, parking lots. Whenever you have like a big truck or something on your left and right and you cannot see, when you're pulling out, rear cross traffic alert will alert you by beeping uh, whenever someone is coming from your left and right that you cannot see. So RCD is rear camera display. RSA is road sign assist. So this can actually help you identify road signs. I like to turn that on. So that's going to be all of your settings in that uh, multi-information display. Then you can press OK for vehicle settings. This allows you to adjust the brightness of the blind spot monitor, sensitivity of the blind spot monitor, RC re, uh, rear cross traffic alert volume, tire pressure warning system. You can press OK. You can set the pressure, change the wheel. That's if you have in your like new tires put on or something. Of course, they should already do that for you. Rear seat reminder on. I recommend leaving that on all the time so you don't leave anything precious and valuable in your back seat. Uh, right there, scheduled maintenance. So that's really super nice. Settings, language, eco, drive info. So that's your multi-information display. Right here in the middle is going to be your main screen and along the left side are a few buttons, home, menu, audio, map, and power. On the right side, seek, track, phone, apps, and tune. There's my home screen. So you can see on the top left is audio, right there is Bluetooth, so that's if I had a phone connected, and then travel or range information. And then again, it's touch screen, and once you touch a certain portion of the screen, it expands the entire screen to that portion. You can see here, this is all radio. So at the very bottom are my preset stations, AM, FM, and satellite. So I like the fact that you can actually combine AM, FM, and satellite all on one little page right there. And then if I wanted to change the station, I can tune it here and then I can press and hold. And that's how I memorize a preset. Pretty easy. Over here on the left side is source. So that's gonna be whether I wanna to listen to Bluetooth, uh, audio, or AM, or FM, or satellite. Station list, options, sound. So this is how I change my bass and my treble fader. And automatic sound levelizer will actually adjust the audio system according to ambient road noise. Then I can press menu, and this is all menu stuff, audio, phone, apps. Projection allows me to project my screen onto the screen itself. Info and setup. And I really recommend whenever you get one of these to go to setup and spend some time here because this is actually how you're going to personalize the vehicle to just the way you like it. So you can see here in under general, this is the setup screen. Vehicle, Wi-Fi, and apps. You can go to vehicle, vehicle customization, and then this is actually how you're gonna customize all of these settings right here. This is kinda neat. I can go to light settings, and I can adjust the headlights auto on sensitivity. It needs to come on with more light or less light. If they're cutting on too late and I want them to cut on sooner, I can make that adjustment right there. So then there's audio. And then here's map, and then I, I can actually use the navigation system on my phone and project it up here. Then I can go phone and apps. So um, uh, some of these you actually have to have basically own the car and have to sign in and everything and use it that way. So. I don't own this vehicle, so you're gonna have to do that yourself. I've really enjoyed the fact that this thing is a little four cylinder that can, it's only got just over 200 horsepower. So that's not much horsepower in light of what other cars are making nowadays. But Toyota has balanced it well. Uh, since this is the SE edition, you also have a little bit sportier suspension system and I, I think the low profile tires and everything uh, help contribute a little bit to the um, 
feel of the vehicle. Uh, one of the things that I really like about it is the eco, normal, and sport buttons that are located directly behind the gear shifter. What those buttons do are going to control the pedal modulation and also steering. So whenever it's in eco mode, it is the most fuel efficient mode and you can tell, you can actually press the eco button and it takes more pedal travel to achieve speed. So you have to push the gas pedal down further in order to get up to speed. It also um, is going to make the steering wheel a little bit more loosey goosey. You can press normal and it basically takes everything I just said and enhances it a little bit. Um, a better accelerator modulation, in other words, you can get up to speed faster, and the steering wheel is a little bit more stiff. Then you have sport mode. So sport mode will actually make the gas pedal the most sensitive. In other words, it makes it so that it is, when you press the gas, you can really feel it. It, it, it responds much more responsive that's also going to stiffen the steering a little bit as far as the, um, the the suspension is going to be a little bit more enhanced and the steering is a little bit more stiff. I really like that because it makes it a little bit um, more capable when you're driving when you want to go in curves and stuff. Uh, the other thing about it is is that it also has to do with a climate control system. So whenever you put it in eco mode, the climate control system will actually pull back a little bit and it will give you less fan speed. When, you're, when you are in normal and sport, it changes the climate control system and gives you more fan speed because it's not so concerned about saving that fan speed for fuel economy. It's kind of an interesting dynamic. I've been driving primarily in sport mode because I like sport mode because this thing's, like I said, only got just north of 200 horsepower, but it's peppy, it's feisty enough. The other thing about this uh, four-cylinder engine, and I think you'll hear it when, we're, when we go to drive here, and I'm, I'm good, I just put it in sport mode, by the way. Whenever you press on the accelerator, and here we go, you can really hear it kind of working. I'm gonna put it all the way down. really really smooth transition uh, smooth transmission um, it's got an eight speed sequential shift automatic transmission and it works really really well it's super smooth in fact it might might be a little bit too smooth for my taste I, I like to feel a little bit more more of a pop in, in those gear changes but uh, right now it's kind of maintaining a little bit higher rev gear because I'm in sport mode so it wants to stay in a mode where when I go to press the gas down it can respond more quickly so right now I'm, I'm doing 55 and I'm turning right at 2,000 rpm if I were in eco mode right now I have a feeling that it would uh, the, the gears would go up so it would probably go into seventh or eighth speed it would drop down in rpm and make it a little bit more fuel efficient but for now I'm in sport mode. and it, it, there's I mean you can hear the engine there's very little lag whenever I press the accelerator and, and to, to downshift to get up to a higher speed uh, right now I'm doing 65 speed limit here is 65 and it feels very very capable um, there's a little bit of road noise just because the tires as I mentioned are low profile uh, but that's that's not anything bothersome it's not a luxury vehicle by any stretch uh, it just feels very good very capable um, I'm gonna shift it over into eco mode now so I just press that um, and it now the dash is blue and um, there's less pedal response I'm gonna press it down Actually, honestly, that was still pretty good. <laughs> that was still pretty good response from the gas pedal. Uh, but um, if you were to do it from a standstill in both eco mode and sport mode, you would be able to recognize a difference, a, a notable difference in the two. Okay, I'm getting back on the highway. I'm in eco mode now, so I'm gonna press it down. Okay. 
think that the way, a good way to think about this eco normal and sport, the same amount of power is available to you. It's just the distribution of the power. Sport mode is going to put it all on right now. Uh, eco, it's just going to make you work for it a little bit more. Same power. One of the things that I'm, I'm kind of confused about in this multi-information display between the tack and the speedometer is I'm, in, I'm looking at the eco indicator right now and it has a little bar graph and it will, it will fill up the, the, the graph or deplete it based on, um, based on the amount of acceleration. But it's like opposite. The, the more I accelerate, the more the eco indicator fills up which to me, it would be the opposite. The more you accelerate, the more gas you're using, the lower your eco score would be. But this, this is actually the opposite. See, I'm gassing it right now and it's full. I, I don't understand that. It is what it is. But um, that's, that's just a kind of a quirk to me. But right now I am going 60 miles an hour and I'm turning about 1500 RPM. That's impressive. I'm actually really feathering the accelerator right now. So I'm, I'm back down to 55. Speed limit here is 55. And uh, it's it's at 1500 RPM. That's, that's actually pretty sweet. Right now I'm gonna shift over because I did not point this out earlier, but I do have paddle shifters on the back side of the steering wheel. You uh, shift down on the left side, you shift up on the right side, really easy to reach. So I'm gonna sh take the gear shifter and flip it over. I'm going to put it into sport mode and so now that automatically defaulted to fifth gear I'm going to gas it a little bit change gears it's not a real shift well that's that's a little faster I don't know if you can hear that or not that's fourth hear that That's a much better shift than the old shiftable things of the past. Uh, that, that, that actually has a much better response. Of course, I am in, in sport mode and I'm gonna finish shifting up through the gears. Yeah, there's eight. So now my RPM's nice and low. That's, 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 that's okay. That works. Not too shabby. Woo -hoo. Test the brakes. <laughs> Got a red light. Brakes are great, nice and grabby ventilated on the front disc brakes so here we are at a stoplight it, it feels good um, I said something about the the seats earlier about how they were really supportive and um, but yet they were they were a little bit I, I don't know not not too supportive but I just wasn't sure how they would be on a, a nice long drive I actually think they would be pretty good now we're in regular drive mode. We're still in sport. I'm going to go to normal mode now because that's the only mode I have not driven in. The way to think of normal in this whole dichotomy of eco, normal, and sport is normal is basically a combination of eco and sport. It kind of has the best of both all three modes. So that's the way to think of eco. Here's the thing about the the, the four cylinder in this. I, I totally get wanting to make it fuel efficient, wanting to make it uh, easy on the environment and everything. The, the only thing about that is though, it, it does feel slightly underpowered. And um, for a vehicle that has an SE title, a sporty look and, and all that stuff, uh, I, I think that it would be nice to only make an SE in a V6 so that you've got something north of 300 horsepower and that you could make it truly an SE model. Um, but, you know, it, because when you're driving around in this SE vehicle, um, you want the, the, the feel of the vehicle to go with the look of the vehicle. And, uh, it, it doesn't really quite match. It, it, it feels like the same amount of power that's in a Corolla and it, it just, that's just kind of a, uh, a thing for me. 
Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for our look at the 2023 Toyota Camry SE Nightshade. Again, I want to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this beautiful Toyota Camry. Again, I'll be sure to leave their contact information in the description box below so you can reach out to them and take a look at their incredible inventory. But remember, the most important thing of all, everybody, have a wonderful day.